I feel that I should warn you that I might step on your toes this morning. We're going to talk about money. Money is often a personal matter. It's something we keep to ourselves. It's money sometimes uh, feels like, what should our relationship with money be? Uh, this morning, we come uh, to the last section of the Sermon on the Mount. We've been journeying over the last few months uh, through the Sermon on the Mount, and I say this morning that I might step on your toes because Jesus, week after week after week throughout this series, has stepped on my toes. All throughout the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus takes us deeper. Jesus wants us to recognize that if we take the kingdom of God seriously, it's going to change our priorities. He started it out with the Beatitudes, those well-known, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And in that first statement of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus turns upside down the values of this world. You see, week after week, Jesus has stepped on my toes, convicting me of my heart's desires, priorities. Perhaps things that I would leave unsaid on a Sunday morning, but he knows our hearts. And this morning, Jesus wants to take on money. And I wanted to call the message, Jesus versus money. But that's not what the passage is about. Jesus isn't against money. In fact, a lot of people will quote that passage that we looked at two weeks ago in 1 Timothy chapter 6, that money is the root of all kinds of evil. But that's not what it says. It says that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Jesus isn't against money. And as we turn to Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24 this morning, I, I, I want us to recognize that it's not Jesus versus money, but it is the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of earth. The priorities of the kingdom of heaven versus the priorities of the kingdom of earth. And perhaps I should say the kingdom of self. If you have your Bible, I invite you to open up with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. I mentioned earlier in the service that this is the final section of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus starts to take, he's been taking us deeper to the heart of religion, the heart of following Jesus. He's not... He's not about outward actions. He's about inward transformation. And this final section of the Sermon on the Mount uh, starts to get practical about what that looks like if we start to let the priorities of the kingdom of heaven affect our relationships with things like money, things like worry, things like the details of everyday life. And this is one of the reasons I, I've been so excited to finish this Sermon on the Mount is because I feel like Jesus has been building on each section in the sermon. It's the greatest sermon ever preached. And Jesus himself is teaching us what a kingdom vision looks like. What people who take seriously the kingdom of God look like. And this morning he wants to take a look at our relationship with money. So, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? 
no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the, to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Commentator Craig Blom Blomberg uh, says it is arguable that materialism is the single biggest competitor with authentic Christianity for the hearts and souls of millions in our world today, including many in the visible church. Materialism. It's everywhere we look. We just came out of uh, one of the biggest, uh, the biggest season of consumerism, of buying more, more, more. And I'd like for us to take a look at these verses for just a few moments and ask, what does Jesus want our relationship to be with stuff, with money? In many ways, these verses are a treasure map. You know, as kids, you, you wear a patch and you're a pirate and you, well, you, you get a treasure map, map and uh, X marks the spot, right? You follow the treasure map and you, you find the treasure. And, and in many ways, these verses are a treasure map for us because Jesus wants us to look at what do you treasure and he's going to give us a map to figure that out. And in these first section, he says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth, and some versions will say rust, uh, the NIV says vermin. It, it, it's kind of a question of how, how you translate that. And um, I've often uh, uh, been confused by that verse because some, some people will say vermin, which is like little creatures and disgusting little insects or, or rats or whatever it is. Um, but really, this word here is, is consuming. Uh, where, where, so it's where moth and, and eating destroy. And so it could be rust, it could be vermin. But the point is, in the ancient world, people would take value into two specific things. It would be fabrics and precious metals. And these would be things that people would find uh, wealth in. It, people who were wealthy would have a lot of these valuable fabrics or uh, precious metals. And what they would do is they would store these things away because they were valuable. They were at risk of uh, not only moths and insects and rust destroying these things, but also high risk of theft. And so people would put them under their floorboards they would have these uh, rooms where they would store their fabrics and try to keep them away from any uh, pests or things that might get to them. And, and, and so Jesus is asking us, what, what do you treasure? And the first thing he's teaching us in this passage is that part of what it means to be kingdom people is that we love the things of God more than the things of earth. And that, that, that's kind of an oversimplification of, of the relationship that we're going to have with stuff, but it's, it's a starting point. That our love, our affections, where we put our value, needs to be more in the things of God than the things of earth. You see, what people would do is they would store these things, these treasures, and they would find security in having stuff. And what Jesus does is he points us to eternity. And he says, will that stuff last? Two weeks ago, I said, you never see a U-Haul on a hearse. At the end of our life, stuff will not be significant. And so when we look at it in light of eternity, Jesus says, store up your treasure in things that won't get destroyed by the things of earth, that won't rust, the things that thieves can't break in and steal. And Jesus is calling us to invest more in the kingdom of God than the kingdom of earth. 
And Jesus is challenging us. And this is why I say, I might step on your toes this morning because Jesus steps on my toes when I read these words and he challenges me. Do I love the things of earth more than the things of the kingdom of God? And to answer that, Jesus gives us kind of the the key, the treasure map. He gives us the treasure map here in verse 21. X marks the spot. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So let's turn that around. Where your heart is, there's your treasure. And so the first question Jesus wants to ask us this morning is, what do you love? Where do you find value and where do you find security? And this is where Jesus pushed me outside of my box a little bit. Because I like financial security. I like to be comfortable. And Jesus challenges us. And and, and there's, there's nothing in this passage about Jesus against money. About Jesus against having finances and investing wisely and doing the things that are smart financially. But Jesus is challenging us when it comes to our heart. The love of money. The hope in riches. The security in finances. And Jesus is asking us, what do you love? Where are your affections? And it better not be in your stuff. Because notice that if we find our affection and our treasure in stuff, what happens when the stock market crashes? What happens when stuff gets eaten by balls? When thieves break in and steal. But if our treasure is in the kingdom of heaven, in investing in his kingdom, of using the resources that he has blessed us with to bless others, nobody's going to take that from me. Nobody's going to take that from you. And Jesus is is not stepping on your toes to limit you, to say... uh, Don't have money or don't have riches. But what Jesus is saying is, don't love these things. Because if you do, something's going to eat your joy. Your joy will tarnish as time goes on. And we see it. You ever put your hope in your treasure and something of earth? It got outdated. The neighbors got something better. And it tarnished. Jesus is inviting us. He's not trying to to step on your toes to, to make your life more miserable. He's inviting you to something more beautiful. But when you gave generously, when you gave sacrificially, That joy doesn't tarnish. Nobody's going to steal that. For where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so Jesus is inviting us to love the things of God more than the things of earth. On January 1st, a new show featured on Netflix that has been uh, changing the lives of not only individuals, but thrift stores. Uh, The show is called uh, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. Has anybody heard of this? Okay, uh, Mary and I actually, I, this, is, this is so funny, I, I was planning my sermon, I was going to mention this, it's kind of a phenomenon that's happening right now, and it's, it's a movement toward minimalism, getting rid of stuff. And uh, I, I was planning this as part of my sermon, last night I hear 
the show playing in the other room, and Mary's watching this show. It's, uh, it's this movement. Uh, it's become a method. I heard about it when her book came out in 2014. Uh, millennials were all about it, and so it's this book about uh, the life-changing power of tidying up, and part of the theory be behind what's become known as the Marie method is you take the stuff that you have and you hold it in your hands and see if it sparks joy. And I've, I've often laughed at this method um, because uh, my shirts generally don't spark joy. But, but the idea behind it is getting rid of stuff that you don't need anymore. And, it, it's, it, and I will say up front that it is a movement toward minimalism that is combating the consumerism that is so prevalent in our culture. And I think that is valuable. And I think it's pretty entertaining to watch. And I think it's, for many people, a helpful method in combating consumerism. But I want to uh, emphasize this morning that it is as much a danger toward materialism. Minimalism is as much in danger of materialism as consumerism is. Because if it is things that bring us joy, our treasure has been misplaced. Because things will rust. They will decay. But if our treasure, if our joy is in Christ, in his kingdom, in investing what God has given us in what he is doing in the world today, that joy will not fade when new methods of tidying up come around. You see, Jesus is asking you this morning, what do you love? Do you love the things of earth over the things of God, or do you love the things of God more than the things of earth? And it comes down to your priorities. Like I said, it's not wrong to have wealth. It's not wrong to invest wisely. It's not wrong to, to be shrewd. In fact, Jesus gives parables, examples of shrewd business owners. But what is wrong is to love the things of earth more than the things of God. And Jesus kind of uh, takes us deeper to ask us not only what do you love, but he wants to ask, what are you looking at? And it, he's in many ways giving us a treasure map uh, to, to help us figure out what is our treasure. Because it's easy to say, yeah, I love the things of God over the things of earth. So Jesus says, what about your eyes? Look at verse 22. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Jesus is using a metaphor here of the eyes being this window into the body, a lamp for the body. And uh, one of the things is Jesus is uh, creatively using language here. Because what he, he's saying, uh, if the eye is healthy, but the word that he uses here for healthy, uh, when you look at this Greek word, it's not a word that you'd use in description of it, physical health. But it's more of an ethical word, of, of whole-mindedness, single-mindedness. In fact, it's a word that is used in other Greek literature as having single-minded devotion. So, let's look at this in terms of what Jesus is saying. If your eyes have single-minded devotion, then your whole body will have single-minded devotion. Jesus is connecting here, and I love when, when Scripture does this for us, is it helps, um, you, know the, you know the kid's song, the, the head bone's connected to the knee bone, or whatever, whatever the song is. Uh, he's saying the eyes are connected to the heart. And Jesus is asking, not only what do you love, but what are you looking at? What do you have a vision for? A lot of people will have, a, you know, the one-year plan, the five-year plan, the ten-year plan, the retirement plan. And Jesus is asking us, what are you looking at? Because that's going to affect what you treasure. 
And if we are constantly looking at the world and what the world's advice is for value, for security, for treasure, then our hearts will gravitate toward finding our treasure in the things of earth rather than the things of God. But if our eyes are single-mindedly devoted to the kingdom of God, if we have a vision like Jesus prayed earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, then if our eyes are constantly looking to that, if we're waking up in the morning and saying, God, what does it look like for me to live out kingdom principles today, this week, this month, this year? And we open up to Matthew chapter 5 and say, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And we start asking our que these questions. We put our eyes on the things of God rather than the things of earth. And the words of that hymn writer ring true that the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And Jesus is asking, what do you love and what are you looking at? And then he's going to tell us that those two questions will tell you who you're loyal to. Because that's how this passage ends. Notice how this passage ends here. In verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. And he gives these piercing words, you cannot serve both God and money. Um, you can't serve God and stuff. You can't serve the kingdom of God and the kingdom of self. They are diametrically opposed. What do you love and what are you looking at? And it will tell you who you're loyal to. And I think the point of this passage that Jesus is teaching us is that your treasure will be your master. What you treasure by your affections, by your value, by your security, and by what you're looking at, what your vision for your life is. That will be the king. And Jesus is getting real practical with us here because it really comes down to a day-to-day -day vision for the kingdom of God. If we really believe that Jesus reigns on the throne and that he's going to return one day, then the things of earth don't matter. And we'll start to use our resources to treasure the things above rather than the things of earth. I, I, have, a, I have a habit of, I like good deals. I like thrift stores. I like... Uh, Mary and I bo both like to find a good deal. And uh, I've got this website that I frequent where it has just the latest people, it's a forum where people post the latest deals and I like to see what, what's on sale and what's, what's happening. But I, you know what I find? If my eyes, if my eyes are focused on these things, even if it means trying to be a good steward of my money. And, and this, is, this is, sometimes I think we use the, the excuse of being a good steward of my money to focus on the things of earth. I, I'm not saying don't be a good steward of your money, but I'm saying prioritize the kingdom of God over the, the, getting a good deal. And, and, and sometimes I, I like to watch HGTV. I like, Mary and I really love watching renovations. And, and you know, we'll drool over Chip and Joanna Gaines or whatever it is. And we, we, we like these things. But if my eyes are constantly looking at the things of earth, then I'm going to start finding my value, my worth, my treasure in the things of earth. Jesus is encouraging us to make God our master or money will master you. It 
So what do you love? What are you looking at? And that will tell you who you are loyal to. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19, Paul gives a, a bold word of encouragement and instruction to Timothy. He says, as for the rich in this present age, and let me, let me pause there and say that's, that's you, that's me, we, we all have different financial situations, but it, when we look at the global scale of things, we are rich, we are blessed. So hear these words to you this morning. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. The encouragement of Jesus this morning is to love the things of God more than the things of earth, to look to the things of God more than the things of earth, and to make God your master and not the things of earth. And when we do, we will take hold of that which is truly life. Let's pray together. Father, thank you um, for these words, for stepping on my toes, for convicting me of the times that I have my eyes on the kingdom of self. Lord, I pray for that for each of us, you would make us more generous. That you would make us um, as liberal with our money as you are with your grace. God, I pray that you would uh, just give us a vision as a church, give us a vision for your kingdom. Help us to, to fix our eyes on, on what you want to do, not what we want to acquire. And Lord, help us to find our security, our security for tomorrow, for next year. for years to come in you and you alone because you are enough. You're all we need. You satisfy our souls with the greatest joy. And so, Lord, I pray that we would hold your word in our hands and say this sparks joy. That we would hold an offering in our hands and say this sparks joy. That we would hold our, our, our bank accounts in our hands and say, Lord, this is yours, not mine. And that our work and our toil and our investments here on earth, that it would all, all be about you and not about us. So God, we pray those words. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.